welcome to the next segment of extrusion under the edges of polymer process engineering. So hello friends, we are going to start another segment that is called the extrusion that is for the polymer processing. Now before we go into the detail, let us have a brief outlook that what we discussed in the previous chapter. We discussed about the different materials used for the injection molding process. If you recall that uh, we discussed the injection molding process uh, in two different lectures and uh, we discussed that how important is the material selection. So we discussed this different materials being used for the injection molding and the thermoplastic, thermoset, elastomers, all those things. And uh, the different fundamentals, uh, we had a brief outlook like crystallinity, amorphousness, semi-crystalline behavior, then molecular weight and distribution, then viscosity, density, viscoelastic behavior included Newtonian and non-Newtonian. And then we discussed about the effect of temperature on polymer behavior. And lastly, we had a discussion about the orientation. Now, in this particular chapter, we are going to discuss another polymer processing operation and that is called the extrusion. Now, extrusion is again a very important uh, uh, process of a polymer processing pr to produce the desired parts, particles and um, different other utility or a commodity products. We will discuss about the different um, extrusion aspects like single screw and the zones or regimes in the extrusion process, solid conveying or feed zones. Then the transition and plasticizing zones we will going to discuss. Then the melt and the metering zones. And uh, we will have a discussion about uh, the geometrical aspect of uh, extruders because is, it is quite essential to have a look about this one because it also plays a vital role in deciding the, the fate of a product. After this, we will have a discussion about the twin screw extrusion. Now, in the polymer processing uh, operation, there are involvement of a flow, deformation and the transfer of energy. The goal of polymer processing operation are to produce a usable object, a useful product. It may be commodity plastic, may be the engineer plastic, it may be highly specialized parts. So for all polymer processing operation, various necessary parameters like flow or deformation or both. That means you must have a knowledge about the, the rheology aspect. Then the transfer of heat, that means you need to be acquainted with the thermal behavior. How this polymer behaves when you apply the heat or when you apply the, the cooling, then is there any deformation? So all these things you need to address. Then the mass transfer, basically it is useful for producing the foams. Then the chemical reaction, that is especially the reaction injection molding. The other important aspect of polymer processing is changes in the polymer structure such as crystallinity as well as the orientation. We have discussion about this one in the previous segment. Such type of changes causes direct influence on polymers and properties like mechanical and electrical properties. So all polymer processing operations can be characterized in three segments. One is batch, semi-continuous and the continuous one. Now here is the classification of a polymer processing. Like in batch, we may have a casting, we may have a compression molding, we may have a sheet forming, thermoforming, transfer molding, all these things we are going to discuss. In the semi-continuous uh, mode, the blow molding, the injection molding or the rotational moldings. Then continuous, this is the calendaring, extrusion, pultrusion, fiber spinning, all these things. So, these are the various uh, polymer processing operations. So, for ease of study, we divided all these things into three segments, batch wise, semi-continuous and continuous one. So, let us start with the extrusion. This can be defined as the act of shaping of a material by forcing it through a die. So, the devices used for the polymer processing to carry out extrusion they are known as extruder. So, extrusion is a process and extruder is the machine. Now, such type of devices are pulse-free pumps which are capable of delivering thermally homogeneous polymer melt at a uniform high rate. Now, extruder is an important part of for operation using dyes, 
as well as in which a melt is injected into a mold like injection molding. Now the extruder are basically the helical screw pumps which converts the solid polymer particle into a melt and that is to be delivered to a die. So first thing the conversion to a melt and then it is forcefully delivered to a particular die. So the screw extruder because the extruder is uh, the main component this can be classified as a single screw and a twin screw. Now let us talk about the single screw. This is the typical you see the, the, the um, screw extrusion. The polymeric material as usual is fed into the hopper here and uh, to the screw channel like this. Now the screw is usually driven by a motor uh, through a gear reducer rotates and hardened the barrel. Now this is the barrel. And this is the barrel heating zone and this is the feeding section and you see this is the gear case and this is the drive motor which runs the things and here you may have a cooling section with the base. Now a thrust bearing, this is the thrust bearing um, absorbs and the rewards the thrust to the screw. The thermal energy is supplied by the internal heat generation like here. Uh, of flowing polymers and external heaters or sometimes both. In some cases, the external cooling is also needed when internal heat becomes so great because you see the frictional heat is again a very crucial. It also adds to the material. So whenever the, it, it, he, uh, the heat goes up, then you need to have some external cooling. So that is why there is a cooling system. The plastic granules are melted as they conveyed and forced through a breaker and a plate screw combination um, ultimately to a die. Sometimes a backflow ball valve is positioned between the breaker plates and um, the adopter to control the process. Now there are uh, three zones in or regimes in the extruder. One is the solid conveying or feed zone. Then second is the, the uh, transition or plasticating zone and third one is melt or neutering zone. So if we plot then you see that this is the polymer melt and a solid polymer. This is the solid zone. This is the plasticizing zone. Then this is the metering zone and here you see that this is a die end. Now solid conveying or feed zone, the pallets they are conveyed into the main segment of the extruder if you recall the figure of the extruder and the conveying capacity is equal to the extruder's melting and pumping capacity. So the theoretical approach is not well defined for this particular zone. Now the semi empirical approach is used that considers the pallet to behave as a solid plug. Now the plug behavior uh, with the little uh, deformation and the rate movement depends on both the back pressure and the frictional forces on a screw flight and barrel. Now the frictional forces because frictional forces also impart a crucial role uh, adds on heat. So the frictional force is a function of a screw geometry and the nature of extruder surface. So the rough surface may create more frictional force and thereby impartion of more, more and more heat. The helix angle is the critical factor. Now let us talk about uh, the plasticating zone or a transition zone. It connects the feed. This is the feed and this is the metering zone. It connects the feed and metering zone. The length of this zone varies with type of material being used. The cross section of flow channel is reduced in this particular zone. So like this. For the rubbery material, the pitch angle is changed so that the overworking can be avoided. The plasticating zone treatment, this requires the analysis that combines the flow, the heat transfer and the mixing. Mixing is again very important because the granules are there. Sometimes you need to add the, some dyes and other things. So the mixing and heat transfer because uh, you are heating as well as the frictional heat is also being generated. So you need to 
to augment all those heat and you need to maintain a proper temperature. Now, it is necessary for usable uh, approach to be established in order to build the effective procedures. That means the optimization is quite essential. Let us talk about the melt or metering zone. In the metering zone, the material is in the melt form. That is why the glass transition temperature and a melting temperature, the knowledge about these two temperature is quite essential. The treatment combines flow and heat transfer both. Now, while uh, the metering area is uh, still complex, it uh, lends itself um, in the technique to the technical examination more readily than other two zones. Now, it is appropriate to take into account the numerous uh, significant aspect of screw extruder geometry before beginning the technical study at each of the zone. Now, let us uh, discuss about the geometrical aspect of the extruder. Now, here uh, before we start to discuss about the various geometrical parameters, this geometry plays a very vital role not only towards the mixing but also for the heat segment and the further movement of the polymeric material. So, there are various uh, uh, geometrical parameters associated in this particular study. One is uh, the axial distance uh, between the flights like this. This, these are the flights. So, you need to know about the axial distance between the flights. Then you must know about the barrel diameter. What is the diameter of the barrel? Then screw diameter. What, what is the screw diameter? You need to know and that is referred as ds and db in the usual notations. Then w that is the width of the flow channel. You must aware about this w aspect. Then screw flight edge with the axial direction and width of screw edge flight perpendicular to the flight. So, all these parameters you must know. Apart from this, you should know about say h that is the barrel diameter and screw diameter, the difference between the barrel diameter and screw diameter. Then screw flight edge width that is referred as s then this is again a very important and you, you should know about this one before deciding the, the things. And clearance between the screw flight edge and the barrel, this should be needed because this is essential for the free movement of the polymer towards the forward direction. So, this is referred as the delta. Then helix angle that is psi, this is the helix angle. So, this is again very important to, to know. The channel width, the channel width uh, usually this is uh, width at a barrel surface and referred as L by P cos uh, phi B minus E where P is the number of channels in parallel and P is equal to 2 for double flight screw and the width is screw is L by P cos phi s minus e. This, uh, this re reflects the geometrical aspect of this extruder. Now, here the numerous uh, different uh, screws, uh, they may be produced as a result of uh, a variety of extrudable polymers uh, and a wide range of operation circumstances. Here you see that the commercially available screws like uh, you see that metering screw, two stage screw, pin mixing screw, you see that the difference in the shape. Then Maddock mixing screw, Davis standard barrier screw, Davis standard screw, uh, Willard, Willard barrier screw, all these things you see that uh, different the prime flight, barrier flight, melt channel. So, all these are difference you can easily analyze that there is a difference and this all depends on the processing condition, it all depends on the polymers being used for the process in question. Now, um, there is again crucial aspect is that typical pressure ranges for the die because ultimately the melted polymer will flow through dye. Now, to convert the polymer through an extruder, ultimately it should have to pass through a dye. So, usually there are different type of a product and enlisted uh, uh, the pressures like cast film, they must have 1.4 to 10.4 mega Pascal, then sheet 1.5 to 10.4, then a pipe, usual process for producing pipe is the extruder. 
so 2.8 to 10.4 then the blown film 6.9 to 34.5 and the wire coating 6.9 to uh, 34.45 megapascal and the filament 6.9 to 20.7 now you see the variation and uh, uh, this reflects that uh, the product how much they are sensitive towards uh, the pressure now another thing is that the solid conveying section the best way is to describe how the solid particles travel in the feed section is an advance of a solid plug with a minimal distortion. So, the basic flow equation of such movement can be represented mathematically like Qs is equal to pi nh dB, dB is again the barrel diameter dB minus h um, in uh, tan theta minus tan psi uh, for the barrel which we have already discussed over tan theta plus tan psi b that is for the barrel into w upon w plus e where w is average, ch average channel width psi b is a complicated function of geometry and this n is the screw speed. Now, let us discuss couple of cases in which uh, in the case one in which the frictional effect of the barrel and screw are the same and there is no pressure difference. So, the equation for such movement can be mathematically represented as cos theta is equal to k sin theta plus k w s over w b into sin uh, psi plus d s over d b cot psi b where w s and w b these are channel width of a screw and barrel and k is a factor. Now, this question arises that how we can determine the k factor. Now, this k factor can be determined as k is equal to d over db sin psi plus mu s cos psi over mu s cos psi into sin psi, where d is the mean diameter and psi is the corresponding helix angle. We have already discussed the helix angle in the previous uh, slides. Another case in which uh, there is no frictional effect and negligible pressure. So, in that case uh, all the notations uh, as per the previous discussion. Now, Q s is equal to pi square n h d b, d b is the, the di barrel diameter, d b minus h then sin psi b into cos psi b into w over w plus e. Now, for considering of a pressure and all possible friction forces given more much more complicated expression in theta. Now, extruder melting or plasticating. Now, in this particular section the solid is converted into melt. So, again I am emphasizing that the knowledge about uh, the Tm that is the melting temperature and a glass transition temperature is quite essential. Now, it is a two phase section with a proportion for solid and a molten material change. Now, there are two melting mechanisms. One is that if a screw is above the melting temperature. So, the solid is surrounded on three slides by a melt film and uh, the adjacent to a melt pool. So, and second case is that when the screw is below the polymer melting temperature, so the film does not exist on two of the solid beds slide. Now, in the development of the equation uh, describing the plastication uh, section, this involves the combining of hydrodynamics heat transfer and melting phenomena. Now, this uh, you see that uh, the, this particular figure shows the polymer melt mechanism like here the solid bed and this is the melt pool. So, different segments just need to be addressed. Now, if uh, the channel depth is considered to be constant, obviously this is an assumption the equation for this section can be x over w is equal to 1 minus c 2 z over 2 rho s v s z h w to the power 0 0.5 and this whole is square. Uh, z m is equal to 2 rho s v s z h w to the power 0 0.5 over c 2 is this is equal to 2 pi s v s z h into 2 lambda w over c 1 rho m v x to the power 
0.5. Now, here we have discussed the two terms C2 and C1. So, where C1 is equal to mu1 into Vr square over 2 plus Km into Tb minus Tm and we are utilizing this C1 over here that is C2 for calculation of C2 that is C2 is equal to C1 into rho m v x over 2 lambda to the power 0 0.5. Now, here x we have utilized the x here x that is the width of the solid bed at any helical length z. Now, rho s and rho m this is the solid and melt density. So, you must know about this one. Then T B and T M, this is the barrel and melt temperature. V S X, uh, V S Z is the solid bed downstream velocity. V X and V R, these are the cross channel and relative velocity. And K M, this is the melt thermal conductivity and 2 lambda, that is uh, the heat of uh, fusion. Now, let us talk about the melt or metering zone. In this section, the melt polymer flow can be treated by the hydrodynamic analysis and usually three principal flow types which can interact. One is the drag flow, the melt drag forward in uh, channel by its screw, the pressure flow, the backward because backward flow because of the pressure difference in the extruder and the leakage flow that is a backward flow in a space between the edge of the flight and the barrel like this. So, the leakage flow can happen if uh, the screw flight is corroded or extruder is poorly designed with a significant clearance between the flight edge and, and barrel. Now, this is the barrel and this is the this can create the leakage. The drag and the pressure flow they are typically predominant. Now, so um, therefore, only drag and pressure flows have to be considered. Here you see the, the extruder flow channels and this is the flow simulation. So, um, when we are considering all these things, then Q total is equal to Q drag and Q pressure. So, um, uh, by semi-empirical approach, if we adopt the semi-empirical approach, the ultimate yield is, this is Q is a yield. So, Q total is equal to Fd is uh, proportional to N minus Fp beta over mu into del P over del L. Uh, this, uh, sorry, this is, this one is alpha. Now, alpha is equal to uh, pi square d square h into 1 minus n e upon 2 t sin square psi and the beta is equal to pi d h cube into 1 minus n e upon 12 t sin square sin psi square. Now, f p and f d are the shape factors. So, here this is the shape factor. Now, these, these above equations are used for isothermal operation and adiabatic cases with energy balance and a temperature versus viscosity relations. Now, here you see that uh, this is the physical representation of uh, Fd and Fp on the flow distortion. This is caused by the flight age. Here you see the channel depth and Fd and Fp and you see the pattern of this one and this reflects the effect of a geometry factor Fd and Fp. Now, there are various principles associated with the design and operational uh, um, things of extruder. So, all these sections like solid conveying, melting and a metering, this should be properly matched. There must be proper synchronization among all three sections and if they are not, then the faulty operation may cause the deformed product. So, this figure shows the three cases in such condition, length versus pressure and uh, um, all these things, three sections, solid conveying, melting and a metering zones, they are reflected over here. This showing the extruder die pressure behavior as a function of process variables. Now, here different cases like in case A, the melting capacity exceeded the capacity of metering section. 
this causes the surge in operation. Now, in this case B, the both metering and uh, melting capacities are matched. This is the optimum operation. Now, here in case 3, the melting capacity is too low. This is starves the extruder. So, you need to have some optimum values for the smooth operation of your extruder. Now, adiabatic operation, this will give uh, a lower output than the isothermal operation in, at the given extruder speed and a pressure difference. Now, for the design or study of extruder operations, there are less elegant design processes available like for example, power is equal to 0 0.00053 C cube into T e minus T f, where power is in usually horsepower, Q is in pounds per hour, C is the average specific heat and usually represented in BTU over pounds Fahrenheit and T e and T f are the extrudate and the feed temperature. So, E represents the extrudate and uh, F represents the feed temperature. The minimum screw diameter, the screw minimum diameter, this can be determined if surface speed and horse powers power are known. So, this is the diameter, minimum diameter is equal to almost equal to 4.2 HP over Vs, where Vs is the surface speed. The length of extruder, again is very important. The length of extruder is in the ratio L by D ratio of 16 to 24. The longer barrels are favored as they will provide the better mixing action. They will have a more uniform uh, at high rates and uniformity of the extrudate. Now, let us talk about the twin or multiple screws. The extruder may use twin or multiple screws in their jobs. Now, twin extruders can operate with either counter or co-rotating uh, screws. Additionally, uh, the screws can be fully intermeshing, partially intermeshing or non-intermeshing. Now, here <coughs> you see in this first figure, this showing the screws, the twin screws rotating in opposite to each other. So, it is like this. Here in this particular figure, this, this reflects the screws rotated in the same direction. Now, here you see that, uh, that there are a couple of things which we would like to have here, that is screw engagement, intermeshing and non-intermeshing. Now, this is the, the two cases in intermeshing, the fully intermeshing and the partially intermeshing. Now, the lengthwise, the, the fully intermeshing, they are subdivided into three aspects. One is the lengthwise and the crosswise, they are closed like here. This is the counter rotating and this theoretically the, the co-rotating is not possible. Then the lengthwise uh, open and the crosswise closed, which is not at all possible in the counter rotating, but it is uh, possible in the co-rotating. And a lengthwise and a crosswise open, theoretically possible, but practically when you are going for the economic aspect, then it is not at all possible like this in the co-rotating. So, when we discuss about the partially intermeshing, the lengthwise open and the crosswise closed like this, you will see this in the counter rotating and co-rotating is not possible. And the lengthwise and the crosswise open, you may have like this. And in the co-rotating, you may have like this type of a, uh, the commercial twin uh, uh, arrangement. And uh, when we talk about the non-intermeshing, -intermesh the lengthwise and the crosswise open, you may have in the counter rotating like this and uh, co-rotating like this. So, this can be categorized uh, related to the size, shape of the screw channel and the flight such as non-conjugated and conjugated screw. Uh, Non-conjugated screw have flights that fit loosely into the other screw's channel and have ample flow passage so that the, uh, there, there, there will be no locking at, etc. Now, conjugated screw each have the flights with a similar size and shape 
and snugly fit into other screws channel with a negligible clearance so they will become more tight in nature the flow in the twin screw unit is due to drag and leakage flow therefore overall flow is due to the difference in between these two flow the effect of leakage flow is expressed in terms of a percentage of drag flow the percentage range from counter rotating unit is 50 to 65 percent and for co rotating unit is 10 to 15 percent now the drag flow for counter rotating units can be represented mathematically like this qd is equal to pi dhn sin psi into pi d minus 2 dh and the drag flow for co rotating units qd is equal to minus pi square d square h d a n psi the mass flow output for the counter and co rotating units that is 0.35 qd rho is less than w is less than 0.5 uh, qdp rho for counter rotating and 0.85 qdp is less than w is less than 0.9 qdp for co rotating units so dear friends in this particular segment we discuss the basic concepts of extruder what different kind of extruders we have and uh, what are the basic principle behind it and what are the integral part of these extruders so that we can get the useful products and for your convenience we have enlisted uh, various references which can be utilized for the further study of uh, this particular important segment thank you very much